بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا عقبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان لا يوم الدين ما بعد عوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ومن آياته أن خلق لكم من أنفسكم أزواج لتسكنوا إليها وجعل بينكم مودة ورحمة إن في ذلك الآيات لقوم يتفكرون وقال تعالى حافظوا على الصلوات والصلاة الوسطى وقوموا لله قانتين صدق الله العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا انك انت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا رب زدني علما السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته How's everybody doing this evening? Everybody had any trouble getting here? Did their car slip out or was it very cold outside? Everybody's doing okay? All right, alhamdulillah. Um, let's just start off by going through a couple of Sunday school questions. Is that okay with everybody? Yeah? So who created everything? Allah. So Allah created you, Allah created me, Allah created our families, Allah created all the things that we like, Allah created all the things that we don't like. Right. Allah created everything. So who created love then? Sunday school? You guys didn't go to Sunday school? Huh? Who created love? Who created love? Who gave us our hearts? Who gave us our minds? So then who created love? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً Allah tells us in the Quran that I have put love in between you. I created from amongst you, your partners. Okay, so this is a couple, there's a couple things I want to talk about. Okay, let's just start from here. Let's just start with this point that love comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Love is directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah himself doesn't talk about himself as hating anybody. When Allah talks about himself in the Quran, he never says Allah hates something. He says, La yuhibbu. Allah does not love the kafirin. Allah does not love the dhalimin. Everything connected to Allah is connected to Allah's love. So if we connect ourselves to Allah, then we will get that love, the love that we want. That's the first point. Um, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the most beloved person to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, Okay, we learn a couple of very, very beautiful and inspiring things from him. Once he was with his companions, okay, radiallahu anhu, may Allah be pleased with them, at a battlefield. And they noticed that there was a woman. They noticed that there was a woman who, because of the fighting, lost her child. Because of the fighting, lost her baby. So she's running around here and there. She's running around here and there. She can't find her baby. All of a sudden, she sees somebody's baby. Okay, it might not even be her baby. She just finds any baby lying there in the middle of the battlefield. She picks it up and she starts to feed the baby. So the Prophet ﷺ is watching this. And the companions, radiallahu anhum, they're also with the Prophet ﷺ watching this. They see this woman running around from here and there. This mother looking for her lost child and she finds a child and she picks it up and she starts to feed it. So now the Prophet ﷺ, one thing that he did that was amazing is he taught the companions manners. He taught the companions adab. One thing he taught them was that you never ever say qasam or wallahi for no reason. He taught them that. For no reason, don't say I swear by Allah. Don't do that. It's not a good habit to do that. Okay, many of us do that. Okay, in our regular conversations we do that. Oh, I swear to God. Or wallahi, qasme, whatever we say. Okay, it's not correct. It's not appropriate. Prophet ﷺ taught his companions to do this, but check this out. He asks them, Do you see this woman here? Can you see that woman there? Can she throw that child into the fire? Listen to the question. He asks them, You see that woman over there? Do you think that she can throw her child into the fire? All of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum together said, Wallahi, kasme, never. 
can this woman throw her child into the fire? They were surprised by the Prophet ﷺ asking this type of question. He said, this mother? She was running around from here to there. She couldn't find her baby. She finds any baby, picks it up, starts to feed it. How could she throw that baby into the fire? Prophet ﷺ tells us and then tells them, answers them, Allah loves you more. Arhamu bihya. Allah loves you more than what this mother loves her child. I want you to think about that. I want you to keep that in the back of your mind. It's indirectly related to the topic I want to talk about today. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have learned that He is the source of all love. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who puts love into our hearts. So then, what does that mean? It means that we have to have a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'll talk more about this later on. But as far as love is concerned, as far as the topic of love is concerned, let's do some technical stuff first and then we'll go into the more interesting, fun stuff. The word for love in Arabic is mahabba. Mahabba. It's also used in Indian languages as well. Urdu, Bangla. It's used as mahabba. Taken from the Arabic word. The word mahabba comes from the Arabic word habba, which means seed. Seed that you plant into the ground. What the connection does love have with a seed? Okay, every single word in any particular language is always very, very precise. It has a particular meaning. What connection is there between a seed a farmer plants into the ground and love that a person feels for another person? Let me explain this. You have the farmer puts the seed into the ground. Now there are a couple things that need to work. There are a couple things that need to be in place in order for you to get something from that seed. One, the ground has to be fertile. Two, it has to re receive enough sunlight. Three, it has to receive enough rain and enough water. Four, it has to be protected from, you know, raccoons or from, you know, cars or whatever, so on and so forth. So there are a couple things, four or five different things that have to be correct in order for that seed to grow into something that helps us, something that we can eat, something that we can build our houses from, something that our animals can eat from, and then we can eat from something that we use to make our clothing. These kind of different things have to be in place for that seed. Similar is love. Okay, we, we have a whole bunch of different things that we don't really talk about. Okay, and this is because of our culture. This is because of the day and age that we live in. One thing that we don't talk about, one thing that we're scared to talk about is the topic of attraction. Okay, we think it's not appropriate to talk about attraction. But let me tell you, there's nothing wrong with being attracted to somebody else. There's nothing wrong with that. Why? Because who put that attraction into our hearts? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? If you're not attracted to somebody of the opposite gender, then, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you've got a problem, okay? We've all got a big problem. All right. Being attracted to somebody of the opposite gender, that means you're healthy, that means you're happy, that means you're okay. All right. There shouldn't be any reason to feel upset about that. Okay? And I'm not going to give you any logical evidence for that. I'm just going to tell you what Allah says. Okay? Surah Al Imran. This is the third chapter, I think the 14th verse. Zuyina lil nas, hubbu shahawati min an nisa. First thing Allah mentions that people like. First thing that Allah mentions people are attracted to. First thing that Allah mentions, and He mentions a whole bunch of different things. First thing He says, hubbu shahawati min an nisa. Love towards the opposite gender. A person wants to fulfill their needs with the opposite gender. There's nothing wrong with that. Allah created us like that. So to think that it's a bad thing to talk about it or it's a bad thing to think about it, that's incorrect. The problem is how we think about it. The problem is what we do with it. The problem is, the issue is, the discussion is, is what do you do when you feel attracted to another person? That's what we're going to talk about. Right. So, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we have to understand, all right, whenever we want to find out anything about our religion, what does Islam say about love, for example? What does Islam say about patience? What does Islam say about mercy? 
One thing that each and every single one of us have to be absolutely clear on and has to completely understand and believe in and trust in is that you got to go back to the source. Okay, you've got to go back to the experts. Okay, does the Quran tell us that we have to pray? Brothers and sisters, does the Quran tell us that we have to pray? وَأَقِيمُوا salata, Establish the prayer. Does the Quran tell us how to pray? Does the Quran tell us how to pray? First, you stand in straight rows. Then you raise your hands. Okay, then you wait for a while. Okay, if you're leading the prayer, you wait for an extra while. Does the Quran tell us that stuff? Does the Quran tell us that stuff? Where do we get that information from? Sunnah. Who's Sunnah? Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is good. So, where do we get our inspiration from? Where do we learn about love from then? Allah tells us that He created love. Where do we understand how what to do with that love? Where do we learn how to practice that love? Where do we learn it from? Where do we get the details from? Who? Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We have to understand in our minds, if you want to learn about what love is, we have to learn about how he understood love. We have to learn about what love was like for him. Then our lives will become easier. Then we'll figure out exactly what's going on. So let me tell you a story. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was a master counselor. He looked at any couple, he looked at any group of people and he knew exactly what that person needed. He knew exactly what their weakness was, and then he gave them the appropriate guidance. He gave them the appropriate evidence, uh, instruction. So one person comes and he asks him, Ayyul amali afdha, what's the best and most loved, beloved action to Allah? So the Prophet Sallallahu said, as salatu li waqtiya, pray your prayers on time. Another person asks him, what's the best action? Prophet Sallallahu says, birul walidain, be good to your parents. Another person asks him, what's the best action? He said, jihad fi sabirillah, sacrificing yourself for the sake of Allah. Different people, Prophet ﷺ gave different advices. He didn't give one single advice to every other person. Why? Because people are different. Allah created us different. Okay, some people like winter, some people like summer. Some people like, you know, one type of food and other people like another type of food. So that's why you can't give everybody the same medicine. You can't give everybody the same exact treatment. People have different needs. People have different situations. Prophet ﷺ understood this better than anybody else. Okay, when we want help or when we want guidance, who do we think of? We think about Dr. Phil, we think about Oprah, correct? Yeah, why? Because they're experts, they've been doing it for a long time. They deal with this stuff all the time, Steve Harvey, you know. But let me tell you, Oprah and Dr. Phil and Steve Harvey, they got nothing on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Okay, trust me on this one. There were two people, okay, Mughis and Barira, radiallahu anhuma. Both of them were from the working class of the Muslims. And the rule was, the law was, if, and they were both married, they were both married, okay? They were both working under the same master, they were both owned by the same person, and they were both married. So the instruction was, up until that time, if one of the two people were freed, then they would be given a choice whether or not they want to stay married or not, okay? Because now, one of the two, the husband or the wife, is now a free person. They don't have to stay married to a person who's a slave or to a person who's a laborer if they don't want to. That's what the instruction was. So the master freed Barira, radiallahu anha. Freed the wife. So now she has a choice. Because now she's a free woman, she can choose whether she wants to stay married to her husband, Mughif, or not. She chooses... She doesn't want to be married to Mughith anymore. Okay, she's allowed to do that. So now Mughith, poor guy, he goes to the Prophet ﷺ. He says, O oh, Messenger of Allah, I love her so much. Please, can you go talk to her? Can you go beg her? Can you go ask her not to leave me? Please tell her not to go. Okay, think about this. Think about what's going on here. Okay, they were married for all this time. Now she has the opportunity to be a free woman anymore. She doesn't have to work for anybody else now. So now she has a choice. If she wants to stay married, she wants to stay together with her husband or not, she says no. For whatever reason. The reason doesn't matter why she wanted to leave him, why she wanted to separate from him. That doesn't matter. The point is, this is what Murira is going through. Murira is so sad and so devastated. He goes to the Prophet ﷺ. He asks him, can you please go talk to her? Can you please go ask her, request her? Please, I don't want her to leave me. I can't live without her. Okay. 
Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he goes to Barira and he asks her, you know, Mughira has sent me to speak to you. He's asking that you don't leave him. You know, I'm asking you very politely if you would please accept this request of his. So she asks the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is this a command from you or a command from Allah? Or is it just the request of Barira? So Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells her that no, it's not a command from me. It's not a command from Allah. The choice is up to you. This is just a request I am making on behalf of Barira. Barira, excuse me, on behalf of your ex-husband Mughith. Right, they're divorced now. Your ex-husband Mughith, he's now asking me to speak on your behalf. Maybe you'll listen to me. So she says, O Messenger of Allah, I apologize. If you're giving me the choice, I don't want to stay with him. Okay, look at what happens next. Listen to what happened next. So now, Prophet Sallallahu goes back to the masjid. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, Prophet Sallallahu uncle is the one who's telling us this hadith. He's telling us the story. He says, Prophet Sallallahu comes back to the masjid. Mughith is there waiting. He tells Mughith, this is what Barira said. She doesn't want to go back with you. She doesn't want to stay with you any longer. So Mughith, he immediately runs out the masjid and he goes chasing after Barira. Now, let me stop you right here. He's running after Barira. Are they married anymore? No. So is he allowed to touch her anymore? No, he's not allowed to touch her anymore. But he, uh, Maurice, right, the ex-husband, he runs and he grabs onto her feet. And he's touching her feet and he's crying, Barira, don't leave me. Barira, don't leave me. I can't live without you. Okay, now, what did the Prophet ﷺ do at that time? This is what I want us to think about. Okay, this is just beast. This is just amazing. ﷺ. Prophet ﷺ, did he say, Astaghfirullah, la hawla, sharia la, you're not allowed to do that? Okay, Voorhees, New Jersey, we're coming. No, he didn't say that. He didn't talk like that. Okay, he knew exactly what love was. He knew exactly what Mughith was going through. So the Prophet Sallallahu he didn't say, Astaghfirullah, haram, don't touch her. That's not what he did. That's not what he did. He looked after, he cared about what Mughith was going through. And then he says to Ibn Abbas, Ibn Abbas says, Prophet Sallallahu said to me, isn't it amazing? Isn't it so so amazing and ajeeb that the amount that he loves her, she hates him. <laughs> Subhanallah. Subhanallah. It just wasn't meant to be. Right. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he understood what love was. Right. He allowed people to love. But at the same time, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he taught us how to understand that love. Not just let it control us, but how we can control the things that we love. How we can control the things, how we can work towards a thing that we are passionate about. That we care about. So it's a very, very amazing story. But maybe if I give you another example, things will become more clear. Okay, and this is just amazing. Okay, all of us because of the world that we live in, well, let me start by saying this one thing before I give you the example. Okay, most of the people sitting in this room right now, okay, we are coming from an immigrant generation, okay, which means that our family, our parents, they grew up and they lived in a very different place at a very different time with very, very different culture, okay? Now we are growing up and we are living here in a very different place, very different time, very different culture. Okay. The thing that bothers us sometimes, okay, and I don't want to make this a talk about marriage, but we have to talk a little bit about marriage, okay, because it's relevant, because it's relevant, because these are some of the examples that we're going to use. Okay, this is what love in Islam is about. Okay. So when we talk about love, we talk about marriage, okay? It's very different from the way our parents understood it. It's very, very different from the way, you know, people in a different part of the world understood it. All right? Marriage is a very, very scary topic to some of us. It's a very, very bleak topic to some of us, okay? And there's a number of reasons why this is the case, okay? There's a number of reasons why we don't like talking about this subject, okay? Which is really why I'm glad we chose this subject this evening. There's a number of reasons. One is because maybe it's somebody in our own homes 
our own families, cousins, uncles, aunties, our own parents, grandparents, we know somebody or we are very close to somebody who, for whatever reason, is part of an unhappy marriage. They are living in a marriage, they are married to somebody in a way that's completely unfulfilling to them. More or less, they're just roommates, sharing one room, sharing one house. Okay, we ask Allah that He protect our families all the time, that He make love prevail in our hearts. But this is a reality. Okay, I'm just going to tell you how it is. Okay, this is one reason why the topic of love and the topic of marriage and boys and girls in Islam, we, we shy away from it. Why? Because there's so much heartache maybe. There's so much suffering. There's so much difficulty and confusion. All right? So that means then if... I get married, this is what's going to happen to me as well. All right, I have no idea the person that I'm going to get married to. And then some big hairy guy is going to come into the masjid one day, say some stuff in Arabic, and then afterwards you pronounce these two married as husband and wife. And then when I go and meet this person, then when I go and live with this person, I realize that I don't like this person. I don't want to spend the rest of my life with this person. This is one way it plays out in our minds. One way. Okay, it's a reality. It's a reality. Some of us may be closer to having this type of an idea. Some may be in a few years' time. But whatever the case, I'm just telling you how it is. So then what happens is because we fear marriage, because we fear love in this way, it takes us to an opposite extreme. It takes us to the opposite side of the spectrum. And what's the opposite side of the spectrum? What's the opposite side of the prism? Twilight. Yeah, may Allah protect us from twilight. Okay. Does everybody know what I'm talking about? Twilight. Okay. Where so so basically what what now 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 you feel like you need to experiment with dating. You need to experiment hanging out, and you need to experiment having a girlfriend or having a boyfriend, because if you don't, you'll be miserable. If you don't, you'll be unhappy. Right. If you just follow the other route where you get married you're going to be sad and miserable so in order to protect yourself from being sad and miserable or the heartache you go to twilight okay all right and the reason why people do that is because they think that they're going to be happy at the end the reason why people do that is because they, they think they're not going to have any heartache at the end okay because Allah knows best, you know, Kim Kardashian was very happy for 72 days, okay, before she divorced, all right, after she got married, okay? And Allah forgive me for taking these names inside the masjid, but I need to say it exactly how it is, all right? There's something there, all right, that made her get married to Chris Humphreys, and then afterwards, 72 days later, okay, well, I think that was her third, and now she's on her fourth, okay? The point is, the point is, okay? Isn't it just obvious by now, okay? Isn't it just something that should strike our common sense by now? When we see so much straight in front of our eyes, okay? It's, it's something that's unavoidable, okay? You know exactly what I'm talking about. It's just unavoidable, these types of things, okay? Where we see people getting into relationships where we see people falling in love okay because of the twilight path yeah they do twilight and then they get married then after 72 days something like that happens okay isn't it common sense that we should stay away from something like that isn't it common sense that that doesn't work okay because these people you know more of them they're more plastic than they are human anyway left right that's one element of it but Failed relationship after failed relationship after failed relationship after failed relationship, failed marriage after failed marriage, okay? We as Muslims, we as people of understanding, we as people who have a sunnah to follow, we uh, who has a beautiful Prophet sallallahu a perfect example to follow sallallahu that kind of stuff should, we should look at it and be like, oh my gosh, that's even worse than getting married, okay? At least I don't have to go through the embarrassment, okay, my entire life is now being talked about by everybody in the community. All right. So, you know, that's, that's, that's one thing. We shouldn't be afraid to talk about attraction. Okay? There's nothing wrong with being attracted to another person of the opposite gender. Okay? Because that just means that you're normal. 
That's how you're supposed to be, okay? I know it's funny, right? But I'm telling you how it is, all right? At the same time, at the same time, we can't do whatever we want with that attraction, okay? So let me ask you, let me answer the question right now. Let me answer the question right now, okay? Can guys and girls just be friends? Can guys and girls just be friends? Okay, don't raise your hands or do anything, okay? Um, the answer is quite simple, okay? It's long, but it's quite simple. I'll try my best to share it with you as best as I can, okay? There's a couple of different layers to this question, okay? There's two different layers to this question. One is obviously the layer of our faith, the layer of us as Muslims, okay? So can guys and girls be friends? Our religion tells us no. Why? Because of the fitna, because of the temptation, okay? Because we are not able to control our desires. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us through the mouth of His Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that, you know, two people who are in a room by themselves who are not related to each other, shaitan becomes the third person who's sitting with them in that room. And they will end up doing something wrong, they will end up committing a crime, they will end up disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. Okay, that's not something that I need to really explain in detail. It should be quite obvious. Okay, so the first layer, obviously, from the layer of our religion. Okay, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to protect ourselves from what's harm, wants us to protect ourselves from embarrassing ourselves, from embarrassing our families, from shaming ourselves, from shaming up our families, our communities. Okay, from destroying the life of another person for no reason. Okay, you know, as Imams, you know, we deal with this stuff. A lot more than people think okay people end up destroying other people's lives why oh just for no reason making promises that they can't keep oh I'm gonna love you forever and I'm gonna take after, look after you forever and then afterwards something happens okay the wife runs or the, the girl runs and the guy runs okay the other ones left crying okay this is the reality all right this is not something that you guys have not heard before so for all those different reasons, okay, from the layer of our faith, can guys and girls just be friends? It should be obvious that the answer is no. But let's break this down even further. The other layer, okay, is how it actually plays out practically. Practically. Okay, so from a belief, from an iman point of view, we understand that no, it's wrong. Okay, it leads to other wrongs. That's why we stay away from the source. Okay, we stay away from going down the wrong path. Because if you go down the wrong path, you'll end up at even more worse destinations but the other layer of this question is how it plays out practically so based on what I can understand what I've learned from different teachers from different scholars is there are basically four ways this can work out okay there are basically four different situations pictures that this th this can work out the first one is just friends okay the first one is just friends, where a guy is friends with another girl, and they're just friends. They hang out together. There's nothing more than just being friends. They're friends on Facebook. They go out together. They meet each other in school, whatever. But they're just friends. The reason why this, well, I'll just tell you, more often than not, this doesn't lead to happy endings. This doesn't lead to something good at the end of it. Why? I'll explain to you. Because you have a guy and a girl who are just friends. They don't like each other more than just being friends with one another. They just hang out. They do everything together. Eventually, what will happen is one of them or both of them are going to get married to somebody else. Right? They don't want to get married to each other. They're just friends. But one of them or both of them are going to get married to another guy and another girl. Right? That's what's going to happen. Now, after you get married, okay, there are married people sitting here. There are married couples sitting here. After you get married, okay, if you have a friend who's a girl and now you are married, would your wife appro approve of you going and hanging out with this other girl? No. no. If you are married, okay, you are married to a guy and this girl is friends with another man, okay, would the husband, okay, would you as a husband be okay with your wife going and hanging out just being friends with another guy? Would you? No. So then what happens is, eventually, okay, the, you guys were just friends. Now you can't stay even just friends anymore. Why? Because you don't want to hurt the feelings of your husband or your wife. 
but you still want to be just friends, but you can't be just friends. So that just leaves you upset and sad and depressed. You feel like you're stuck with this husband, you're stuck with this wife, who you're not really friends with. You're friends with the other person. But you're stuck with this person because you're married to them. Maybe you love them, maybe you don't love them. But you're still friends with the other person. Okay, so that doesn't end well. The first scenario where you're just friends, that doesn't end well. The second scenario is uh, the friend zone. Okay? <laughs> Behave. Okay, the second scenario is the friend zone. Okay? And the friend zone is very, very interesting as well. The friend zone doesn't have a happy ending either. Okay? And I'll explain the friend zone. The friend zone is where you have a guy and a girl. They're friends with one another. Eventually, over time, it could be the guy, it could be the girl. One of them loves or one of them likes the other one more than the other one likes them back. So eventually, as they are just hanging out, as they are just being friends, after a period of time, the guy will say to the girl, you know what? You know, I'm really, really attracted to you. I really, really like you. I want to spend the rest of my life with you. And then the girl says, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, we're just friends, you know? I, I, I don't, you know... Yeah, you're nice and everything, but whoa. Friend zoned. So now, now what happens is the guy's upset. He's depressed because she just friend zoned him. And now she's upset as well. He's like, oh my gosh, we were just friends. Everything was free. Now, now he's acting all weird towards me and stuff. Every time I open the door, every time he opens the door, he holds it for me. And, you know, every time he, I send him a text and he gives me this long message back, you know, the guy starts acting... So he's upset, she's upset, she's upset, she, did, she, she hurt his feelings, she didn't mean to. She never wanted to anyway, she was never even thinking of him like that. He's upset, why? Because she doesn't like him the much as he likes her. So that doesn't have a good ending either, okay? So we talked about two, there's two left. The third one is never meant to be. The third one is never meant to be. Okay, it's similar to the first one where you have a guy and a girl, okay? who both like each other very much, who both like each other very much, both of them, both of them, they decide that they want to get married to each other, okay? But um, either the parents get involved or the marriage doesn't work out. They are forced, both of them, to get married to somebody else that they don't want to get married to. Very similar to the first scenario. Right, and there are all these different reasons why they want to be together, they try to be together, Some of them, sometimes they even think about running away and doing whatever they want to, but it was never meant to be, okay? They never thought about all these other reasons why they're not going to get together, either because they live far away from each other, either because their families come from different backgrounds, they won't approve of one another. This is another way it can play out, okay? It's a bit different, but it's also very similar to the first. So never meant to be, that also makes both people sad. That makes the guy sad, that makes the girl sad. It's like we're doing whatever we can to try to be happy, try to be together, but there's all this other stuff getting in the way and you can't really do anything about it. The fourth scenario is happily ever after, okay? And I know everybody's thinking, oh, that's gotta be me. I don't fall into the first three categories, but let me tell you, happily ever after, okay, is very, very rare, okay? It's very, very rare, okay? It's very, very rare that, you know, you and this person who you fall in love with, who you meet at school, okay? It doesn't happen very often. You both grow old and, you know, like the notebook, okay? You both grow old and you spend the rest of your life together, okay? You have to understand, realistically speaking, it doesn't happen very often like that, okay? So those are one of the four ways it could play out, right? So can guys and girls just be friends? Okay, I explained that. So... Let me give you another example of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, okay? I'll give you two. First was the love that he had for our mother Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha. She had his children, married to him for 25 years, okay? Like even the notebook, okay? Whatever, it's a nice story. Two people who love each other, fall in love and they grow old. You know, those are very, very nice, heartwarming stories. Again, they're not real, they're, they're not like common, they're rare, but still, this is the type of relationship, not similar, but you know, in concept, that the Prophet ﷺ had with his wife Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha. 25 years, happily married. She gave everything that she could 
for his happiness. And he gave everything that he could for her happiness. They had children together. She died, radiallahu ta'ala anha, she passed away and the Prophet sallallahu was standing by her bedside. As soon as the Prophet ﷺ has this great experience and becomes a Prophet, the first person he speaks to is Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha. He thinks he's possessed. Cover me up, cover me up. I don't know what's going on. Am I being punished? Is something wrong happening? Is something bad happening to me? She says, La wallahi, la yghzikallahu abada. Innaka la tasilul rahm wa tahmilul kal wa tu'inu ala nawa'ibil haq wa taqrid dayf. You help people. There's no way Allah can ever punish you. You are the messenger of Allah. There's no way you can ever be punished. Why? Because all you do is you help people. All you do is do good to people. This is how their relationship was. And let me tell you, the Prophet Wasallam, his love for Khadija is greater than the love that you saw in the movie The Notebook or any other type of movie or any other type of Bollywood movie. Okay? Anything that you've ever imagined, Romeo and Juliet, Devdas and Faro, Veer Zara, it doesn't matter. Okay? You have Muhammad and Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu wa sallam was so heartbroken, so heartbroken after she passed away, that there was nothing that could comfort her, that could comfort him. The only thing that could give the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam peace of mind was that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took him from this world and communicated with him above the heavens. Right? The story of the Mi'raj, when the Prophet ﷺ made the journey up to the heavens, that happened after the death of Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha. After that experience, only then did the Prophet ﷺ stop having so much grief. But he still missed his wife Khadija radiallahu anha very dearly. This is love in Islam. That's real love in Islam. That's an undying love. And I'll give you another example, the example of our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. Okay, and this is just an amazing hadith. Okay, and um, actually, Sheikh Mushrid, can I ask you to come to the front, please? Inshallah, very quickly, we'll do this. This is interesting. So, our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. Okay, look at the love that she had for her Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, okay, he's with his wife Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha. And, and picture it like this. His house is on the other side of that wall. So you have the masjid. On the other side of the wall is his house. His wife Aisha radiallahu's house. So one day there were some Abyssinians. Okay? People from East Africa. Excuse me, West Africa. They were practicing throwing spears inside the courtyard of the masjid. Okay? They didn't have carpet. So they were doing these type of exercise and recreational activities in the masjid. So Aisha radiallahu anha, she observed this. She wanted to see it. So she asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, can I go and watch them? Okay, so now when our mothers or when our sisters or when our wives or when our daughters, they see something cool and they want us to take them. So what do they say? Oh, can we go there? And then, you know, if we answer like, okay, fine. So then afterwards, they'll feel bad. They'll be like, okay, you know what? Actually, I don't want to go. Oh, but yeah, I said yes. He said, no, I don't want to go anymore. This is what happened. No, did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam react like that? Okay, fine, let's go. Let's watch them. No. He said, fine, let's go. All right, now picture this. I'm gonna try my best to picture this, okay? Try my best to present this to you, okay? So, come over here. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, okay? And this is for demonstration purposes, okay? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is standing in front and his wife Aisha radiallahu is standing behind like this. All right. And now she is looking at the Abyssinians, okay? So now, Pay attention to this, okay? The Prophet ﷺ is in front of her. She's not as tall as him, okay? You got strong legs like Sheikh Murshid, it's different. She's not as tall as him. So she's literally like holding on to him like this because she's not as tall. She can't see over his shoulder. So she's going to kind of prop herself up and her cheek is close to the Prophet ﷺ like this. We're not going to do that. Okay? <laughs> her cheek is touching the cheek of the Prophet ﷺ. Now think about that. The Prophet ﷺ holding her weight up on her on his back she is also propping herself up okay i want you to pop this image in your head and they're watching the abyssinians train inside the masjid so what does the prophet sallallahu ask okay what would any of us ask are you done yet how much longer aisha radiallahu and our mother says she says no not yet okay some of us would lead out a sigh at that time some of us would get very frustrated at that time but this is not anybody else this is the prophet sallallahu the greatest lover in history Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He doesn't react. He says, okay. 
He asks her after a while again, are you done yet? And what does she say? No, not yet. Okay, still no problem. He asks her a third time, are you done yet? She says, yes, I'm finished. This is love in Islam. This is what I want you to have an image of. This is who the Prophet ﷺ was. Okay, this is romance. Okay, this is what it's all about. Okay, Jazakumullah khairan. Afterwards, Aisha radiallahu anha, later on, after the death of the Prophet wasallam, after he passed away, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, she's telling us this story. She's telling this hadith to her students. She says, listen to this, listen to this. She says, Wallahi, I didn't care about the Abyssinians in the masjid that day. I just wanted to spend as much time holding the Prophet Look at the love that he had for her and she had for him. Okay, this is love in Islam. Okay, and I'll just mention one last thing. Okay, there is a saying in English that is very, very vulgar. So I'm not going to say it, but the meaning of it is you give preference to your brothers before your wives. Okay? Muslims never use that type of language. We don't say that our wives are gardening tools, okay? All right? This is completely impermissible in Islam to speak like that, but we have this concept, okay? You know what? Forget all that. Come, let's hang out. 31 year olds, let's just go play PS4. Let's just go play Xbox all day. Okay? No. No. This is not how we behave with the person that we love. This is not how we have a relationship with the people that we love. Okay? It has to be a balance. Okay? People talk about it all the time. People talk about it all the time. Okay? People come to me. People come to the Shaykh. People come to Imams all the time. He says, Shaykh, Imam Saab, you know, you know, how do I get my wife to love me? You know? How do I, how do I get my wife to treat me better? Okay? I wish that my wife was like Aisha. I wish that my wife was like Aisha. You know, clean, how much? You know, no, 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 it's not, that's, this, is, this is how we think about it. That's not, you know, that's, that's, that's the image that we have in our mind where Prophet would say clean and she'd be like, how much? No. So the answer to that is you gotta start acting like Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you want your wife to love you like Aisha, if you want the person who you love to love you like Aisha, you've got to love them like Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Easier said than done, yes, I agree. But that's what this life is all about. It's about making that effort. It's about struggling. It's about learning about all of these different things. Okay? Both of them are drinking from a cup. Aisha radiallahu she drinks from a cup and she, well, you know, I don't know if they had lipstick in those days, but she puts her mouth on one side of the cup. And she's drinking from it. And she gives it to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asks her. She says, show me where you put your mouth. And he put his mouth on that same place. This is love in Islam. Okay? She's eating from one piece of meat. She's eating from one piece of meat. And he gives, she gives that piece of meat to him. You know, think of it like a drumstick or something like that. A chicken. And then he bites from exactly the same place that she was chewing that piece of meat from. This is love in Islam. This is love in Islam. Okay. So, you know, I just want us to think about these things. Okay. I want us to think about these things. And I'll leave you with one final advice. Okay. In the beginning, I mentioned the story that is kind of not relevant to this topic. I mentioned to you the story of the woman who was in the battlefield and she lost her child and then she found her child. Prophet asked the companions, can she ever throw her child into the fire? He's, they all say, Qasam Wallahi, no. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves, loves us more than this woman loves her child. That means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not leave us hanging. Okay? At times, because of where we are, because of how old we are, because of things that we see around us, we feel depressed. We feel like I'm never going to be happy. We feel like I'm never going to be happily married. I'm never going to find the person in my life who lights up my life. I'm never going to experience that type of a happiness. It's incorrect. It's not appropriate to think like that. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who placed love in people's hearts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who created your partners from you. You just don't know it yet. Okay? You just do not know it yet. Okay? There is somebody who's destined for you. How do you get that? How do you get what Allah has kept for you? You ask Allah for it.
You connect yourself to Allah, that's how you'll inherit it. Allah will not leave us hanging. Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. He's leaving Egypt now. Firaun and his army are after him. He's going, he has a murder on his head. He has killed a Qibti. He has killed somebody. And he turns to Allah and says, Allah, you're not going to leave me hanging. Prophet of Allah, Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. What happens next? He ends up reaching a well. There are some young women there. He assists them, gets some water out from the well so that they can feed their animals. Those young women, they go home. And then their father, the elder of that community, of that city, comes back to Prophet Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. He says, Beta, I'm going to ask you to please work for me for this many years. And I'm also going to request you to please marry one of my daughters. Okay? Wife and a job, two thumbs up. Okay? This is Prophet Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. Okay? Because he turned himself to Allah, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looked after him. Okay? This is what we have to do. This is what our mentality needs to be. Okay? And I mentioned the other verse in the Quran that some of us may, were, may, may have been thrown off by it. Okay? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Baqarah, Hafidhu ala salawati wa salatil wusta wa qumu lillahi qaniteen. What's interesting about this verse, Hafidhu ala salawati means protect the prayers. Be very, very punctual, be very, very cautious, and have concern about performing your prayers on time. Make sure that you don't waste the prayers, make sure you don't neglect the prayers. But if you look at the Qur'an, if you look at that part of Surah Baqarah, the previous, I think, 10 ayats before are all talking about divorce and disagreements and marriage disputes. And the next couple of verses after that, the next couple of verses after that, they're also talking about disagreements between husband and wife. What to do when you divorce and how to get third party involved. In the middle of this entire discussion about when people disagree with one another. People who love one another when they disagree with one another. People who are attached to one another when they disagree with one another. In the middle of it, smack in the middle, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, pray properly. Look after your prayers. What does that mean? What does that teach us? When we hit a rough patch, and everybody hits a rough patch at times. Okay, we're talking about two different individuals here, a man and a woman, when they get married. Coming from two different life experiences, two different upbringings. There's no way they're going to agree on every single thing exactly. When the time comes, when there are disagreements, okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is instructing us, just by placing this verse, this instruction here, He says, go back and strengthen your connection with Allah. Allah will put that love and mercy back into your hearts. There comes a time where you don't really agree with what your wife is saying at all. You don't agree with what your husband is saying at all. You just don't want to listen to them. You just don't even want to smile with them. You don't even want to spend the night with them. Right? You don't even want to look at them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what's his instruction? You know what? Connect yourself with Allah. Pray your salah. Go to the masjid. Recite some Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring that barakah, that blessing, that rahmah, that mercy, that mawadda, that love back into your heart and the heart of your spouse. This is profound. Subhanallah. If we have a strong connection with Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not leave us hanging. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not deprive us of our love, of what we love, what we want to love. Okay. So this is what I think is love in Islam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. But I'll just leave you with one hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. I'll leave you with one hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Al-mu'minu ma'lafun, wa la khayra fi man la ya'laf wa la yu'laf. The believer is supposed to be a source of love. The believer is supposed to be a source of love. And there's no good in a person who nobody loves them and they don't love anybody else. Just grumpy, miserable, hateful people. Okay, this is the worst thing in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Person who has no heart. Okay, who person who just can't enjoy a young child smiling or playing around. A person who doesn't enjoy looking at their mother. Okay, a person who after seeing their long lost brother after many years at university or many years abroad doesn't want to rush to him and give him a hug. Allah says there's no good in that type of a person. That person is just trash. Okay, a believer is supposed to be a source of love, an object of love. And there's no good in a person who doesn't love others and nobody else loves him. What kind of a person is that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Rahman and Rahim. Our messenger is the messenger of mercy. 
So I go back to the example of the seed. Okay? What does the word mahabba mean? And what connection does it have with the seed? When you plant the seed into the ground, it has to have the correct environment. It has to have all of the things it place in order so that people can take benefit from it. When you incline towards a person, when you are attracted to somebody else, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala plants the seed of love in your heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala plants the seed of your love in that person's heart. And again, I'm talking about this from a halal point of view, yeah? So now, if that person is something worthy of being loved, if that person is a person who is noble, is a person who is kind, is a person who has good character, is a person who has beauty, if that person is something who is worthy of being loved, if that person loves others, if that person has mercy towards others, what happens then? What will happen then? That seed that was planted in their heart will begin to grow. They will express their love for you. And once that love increases, what's going to happen to you? You are now going to do things for that person. Everything that you're thinking about, you're thinking about that person. Okay? That person tells you, you know what, I'm feeling sad, can you please come over? Yes. This is what love is about. This is what it means to plant the seed. Right? Yes, it can happen. Like again, I mentioned to you the four different circumstances. Okay, just friends, friend zone, happily ever after, never meant to be. It's possible that can happen as well. But the point is, if you want to understand love, you know, there's no other way to understand it except by looking at the one who is the most beloved. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Thawban radiallahu is on his deathbed. And I'll just finish with this. Excuse me for taking up time. He was the servant of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He would do some odd jobs for him. And he's now disappeared for a couple of days. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam goes to visit him. He said, where have you been? What's up? He says, oh, Messenger of Allah, I'm not feeling well. And I don't know how much longer I'm going to be alive. I don't know how much longer I'm going to be here. So I'm sad. I don't know if I go to Jannah. I don't know if I pass away. You're obviously going to Jannah. You're, going, you're the messenger of Allah. I don't know if I go to Jannah, if I'm going to see you because you're going to be on such a high level. I don't even know if I'm going to get to Jannah. And if I do get to Jannah, I don't know if I'm going to meet you. So the Prophet ﷺ said, Don't worry, Thoban. Al-mar'u ma'aman ahabba. According to one narration. A person will be with the person whom they love in the hereafter. Okay, so if you love somebody you're not supposed to love, you're going to be where you're not supposed to be in the hereafter. If you love somebody who you are supposed to love for the right way, in the right manner, for the right reason, pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you will be with that person in the hereafter. You will have a happy life in this life and you will have a happy life in the hereafter, okay? You know, one thing that, you know, myself, Sheikh Murshad and others, what we try our best to emphasize and to teach and to incorporate into our da'wah is that you don't have to have a boring and miserable life in this world, okay? You can follow the rules of Allah, you can follow the sunnah of the Prophet and still have a good time. You know, we have a notion in our mind, soon as you learn a little bit about the deen, soon as you start to practice a little more of Islam, whatever practice means, you start to come to this, life must become very, very boring. Everything's haram. Everything's impermissible. You know, I got to pay attention to the way I dress and my hair and my jeans. No. Okay, no. Our religion is a religion of love. Okay? As long as we understand exactly where we're going, as long as we understand what love is, what Islam says about love, then we can have a nice life in this life. Enjoy, have your fun in a halal way, in a permissible way. Worshipping Allah, serving the creation of Allah, and still end up straight in Jannah in the hereafter. I make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala... Keep us united in this world and reunite us all in Jannah al Firdaus. Whatever is correct is from Allah, whatever is incorrect is from myself and Shaitan. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in. Jazakumullah khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.